As expected, it brought hell with it. After playing more mind games in the reception barracks, the reception DIs marched us over to our assigned barracks to meet our training drill instructors for the very first time. Once again, we found ourselves sitting in the same manner in which we were at the airport. This time we were perfectly aligned left to right and covered front to back, all of us seated directly in front of the DI's duty hut. Then the gates of hell opened. The duty hut doors swung open and more poster marines marched out and came to attention right in front of us. Their movements were crisp, fluid, snap and pop. They moved and looked like perfect functioning robots. They had no expression on their faces. They looked straight ahead. It was then the reality of what I did and where I was hit me. The senior drill instructor introduced himself while the marine robots stood at attention behind him. They remained so still you wondered if they were actually real. Anyone that has gone through boot camp will never forget the names of their drill instructors. Once names were identified and the senior drill instructor gave us a brief introductory and or more like a warning, he then said, drill instructors, they're all yours. Never again would I wonder if they or the shitstorm they brought with them were real. Collectively, they snapped out of their coma-like state and began barking orders. It was all asses and elbows from there on out. All the recruits were overcome with terror. It was psychologically tormenting. The psychological transformation of boot camp is a very intense and intentional effort by the Marine Corps to make warriors out of civilians. The Marines' mission is simply to fight the nation's battles. One of the myths about Marine Corps boot camp is that of DIs beating up recruits. That may have happened to recruits during the Vietnam era and perhaps before, but over the past 30 years, drill instructors don't physically touch recruits. Mothers of America changed that over the years. Look, the bottom line is this. DIs are not allowed to hit recruits anymore. DIs will get right up in your grill, screaming things that would make your father cry. Sometimes I received a smoky burn on my forehead from the DI's campaign cover, but that's probably even by accident as their head is bobbing back and forth while launching insults and saliva. I recalled hoping my DIs would lose their voices from yelling all the time. But I would later learn that they would train on voice manipulation so that they would not damage their vocal cords. This would become known as the frog voice. Yelling is an important tool in the Marine Corps. It's never ending. It's a staple of boot camp. Its design is to create as much chaos and stress as humanly possible to prepare you for the stressors of combat. It also instills mental toughness, the ability to cope under pressure. Many recruits will wash out of boot camp within the first couple of weeks. It should be noted everything the DI does and says is for a reason. What they do and what they say is rehearsed. It's all brilliantly orchestrated. But a recruit doesn't figure that out until very late in training. The first phase we spent hours upon hours drilling, marching, running, push-ups, pull-ups, and more exercises than Richard Simmons could ever wrap his mind around. 
I was mentally anguished because of the stress and pressures of getting the weight off and thinking I wasn't making progress. However, my towel didn't lie. When I first started, I could not wrap my towel all the way around me. Matter of fact, I couldn't even touch the two ends together. After one month in training, I was tying my towel around my waist. I was no longer a diet private. But that doesn't mean I never saw the quarter deck again. Piss off the DI, that's where you found your ass. We were a raggedy bunch, our pants unbloused and sagging down over our boots. We didn't look anything remotely close to what a Marine should look like. That's because the clay was still being formed. The platoon does not come together in phase one. We were a bunch of individuals still functioning within our own identities. That's one of the reasons for the haircuts when we first arrived at receiving. Civilians tend to dress and keep their hair in a way that expresses their individuality. The haircut takes that away from you. You dress the same and look the same so that you function and think the same. The Marines do not want individuals. Being an individual today could get someone killed tomorrow. Every night before hitting the racks, we all lined up in front of our bunks for hygiene inspection. There were recruits on starboard side, which would face the port side recruits. I recall standing there my first night. I was a portly fella. I had dark circles around my eyes, coupled with my bald head. One of the D.I.s stood in front of me and blurted out, You got to be shitting me! Look! It's Uncle Flipping Fester! Anyone with age under their belt would know Uncle Fester was a character on the TV series The Addams Family. He was notorious for being able to turn on a light bulb by simply sticking it in his mouth. With that said, Two other D.I.s circled around me, hollering and screaming, Uncle Fester obscenities, one of which ordered the recruit next to me to go to the supply locker and get a light bulb. The recruit sounded, Sir, yes, sir, and he was off like a fart in the wind. Once he returned, the D.I. stuck the bulb in my mouth. The other recruits laughed, the rants and the jokes, the obscenities continued. So did the laughter. I was accused of being defective because the bulb wouldn't light up. One D.I. piped up. I bet if this bulb was made of chocolate, you'd light her up. More laughing ensued. On cue, the D.I.s swung around like crazed bumblebees and began running up and down the squad bay, yelling at the other recruits for laughing and having no discipline. They bent and thrust us right there on the spot. This went on for what felt like eternity. I did the entire thrashing with the light bulb in my mouth. I was once again drenched in sweat. I'd have given a chocolate light bulb to the drill instructor for a five-second shower. Instead, it was lights out and add attention on our racks to the sound of taps.